I told U-Haul I was towing a 2007 Monte Carlo. Didn't have a stock car option as a trim package. <laughs> this is like Paul Bunyan's race stop out here. <laughs> it comes out with all this stuff on it. Oh yeah. But we are crossing the Hudson River right now. That is New York City. Way out there, just looks like a bunch of sticks coming out of the ground. Hey, this is one heck of a driveway out here in the middle of nowhere, Massachusetts, basically. This is a part of the country I have never been in before. That's hard to find these days. If you're wondering, Logan stayed home so we wouldn't have to deal with the dog. I could just run up here, get the car, do a turn and burn, and go home. This is Jeff. Nice to meet you. You used to drive this car? Yep, yeah, used to drive it in the E-Series, and uh, we bought it off of Gibbs, and it was Logano's E-Series car for the short tracks. When was the last time you used it? I think the last year we raced was 2012. Could have been Iowa Speedway huh. that we raced that last. Or Martinsville, because I, I think we raced Martinsville with it too. I think that's why we have the new side on it, you know, short track racing. Yeah, as you said, so, you didn't tear it up, you just changed it. Yeah, just it changed the side, exactly. Huh. Yeah, no clips, no nothing. Just basically just fixed all the dents that are in it. Who did this? Uh, that was done, I think, by... Dave Davis, I want to saw. I don't know if Dave did that or not. It was one of the main bodybuilders down south at the time. It looks nice, whoever did it. 19 means it was from the 19 car of the Gibbs Bush series. If it was the 18 car, it would be 18 All right. something. All right. That's what he said. So All this right. was 19. So this was built for Labani. Bo Bobby Labani, yeah. Bobby Labani. He right. said 1958 and 59 yeah. were Bobby Labani's. All right in the when he raced in the bush series in like oh five yeah and then i think eric almarola drove it the next year yeah i think you're correct on that yeah and then uh it went to joey in the east series the east series yeah and they switched to toyota and it sat that's why we got them is because of all the the bodies we're getting switched over to, to toyotas huh and they weren't going to cut the body off of this and that's probably also why we got the the other car behind the Miata up there, that was a Hamlin car. Yeah, let's look at these. I was looking in the background of the pictures you were sending me, and I'm like, there's all kinds of cool stuff oh, in here. A lot of stuff here. It's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> Every functional... There's, a lot, of, there's a, lot, a lot of stuff. Every functional garage is a mess unless there's a crew of people paid to maintain yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, when I, had, when I had people here working all the time, it was spotless and everything had its spot. But yeah, so this was a Gibbs car that Hamlin drove. And that was what one number one thirty three. I think that's what you sent me. I think it was one thirty three. Because one thirty two was Joey's bigger one, track car. Correct. Because it went to uh, it went to Mike McLaughlin because he was doing all their show cars. So when the COT car came out, they started switching all their race cars over to show cars that they would bring to the track. You know, like on those, you know, out for the regular public to go look at. Yeah. And when he got this car, he said it was way too nice to turn into a show car that he'd rather see it raced. So he called us up and see if we wanted to buy it. Huh. What about the one on the bottom? What is so that? This one's uh this one came off of out of Haas before Stewart owned it. It was a Johnny Sauter car. I wanna say I think they raced Pocono with it. Um and it basically lived I think they only ran it seven times, but they turned this into their their test car. So when we got it, it had a lot of little tricks, you know, cut into the body and, and you know, they, they used the testing for aero and, you know, they, it was their cheater car pretty much. Huh. Like I they, think would... they ran, I think they ran a one race at, at Pocono and then they turned it into their cheat. You know, whenever they're going to go testing, they just brought this car out and they tried all the little trick things to it. That's neat. And could you, did you were able to race it with some of those things still on there? Uh, yes and no, because they caught us when we brought it to the track. So we had to, we had to change some things on it. What about th these, th that one's <laughs> these our, ones? That one's our road race car. Um, that one we actually bought off of Dale Quarterly. I think it had the, has the record at Watkins Glen. And this is the one that beat Boris said and when Boris came to run the E-Series. My dad's old 70 Corvette, he used to race and finished second national championship in beat production. What about that one? That one was one of our first cars. That one was the 
the one I was telling you about, the nationwide kid that passed away. Um, Blaze Alexander. Blaze Alexander. It was built for him. That had never been raced, so that was a 105 car, uh, inch and a half drop snout. Uh, we actually had two of them, one for me and one for Dale Quarterly. And we ran that car for years. That was before all these other cars, that was that was a car that was doing all the work at the races. I did notice you had a couple X pipe systems back there. Yeah. Did you find those? <laughs> <laughs> I mean it used to be back in the day when we would go to the cup shop, we would load up the hauler with all their used parts and no matter how much we load up in the trailer, it, it was always the same price. So nowadays it's not really like that. So we used to have a, t a lot more parts. I mean, look at me you now, the radiators. I mean, it's wow. it's not like a cup shop, but for us, this is what we we needed, That's, you know. You'd never expect to find this magnitude of stuff in this part. Like, yeah, just yeah. Try, You just never know. You just never know. Uh, people don't realize how serious this is oh, yeah. in this part of the country. Oh, for sure. Like, Bush North was a big deal. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like, the more you look, the more you find. You got more engines yeah, under well, here. Like it, SB2. Looks funny now with our endurance racing with the Miata, I've been stealing a lot of these parts and modifying and putting them on our car. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have different shape slugs for different type of... Different chassis. So that chassis, since that was a Haas car that actually came from Hendrix, right? The chassis was built in Hendrix. So I had to persuade them into giving me slugs because your standard slug is this size. So huh. it's different. Hopkins Gibbs car used standard ones? And Hopkins uses the uh, standard... So long as you can get anywhere. Well, that's good for me then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> where was this one buried at before you dug it out for me? Uh, that was right where the Corvette was. Oh. Actually, the Corvette was underneath the road race car, and this has been sitting right back there. Huh. So it's been inside the whole time. How much of this did you change when you got it from Gibbs? Like, is this was this in there when you yeah, got it? We didn't change one, one thing. Really? Yeah, just put our seat in it. We actually, the... I don't even think, I, I don't even, I think the only thing we, we changed it, well, we did run it at Stafford once, and the only thing we changed was, I want to say we changed the pickup points on this left front, and obviously springs, right, because they didn't give us a car with springs yeah. in it, you know. We literally took this car and, and put shoved our motor in it, and went to Loudon. It was all black when you got it? All black, yeah. Did it have any stickers left on it or did they take them off? They had to take them all off, oh. yeah. And that's why the roof is black, you know, all the, all the stuff is, the stuff that we haven't changed, black. So this is original black. Yep. Yeah, we just painted the orange right there. Did North not run uh, roof flaps? No. So this car, like, must have had roof flaps when it was, when Labonte was driving it and then Correct. they filled them in. Correct, for the weight. Interesting. We take all the roof flaps off for the weight. Oh, you can see the old roof flap line. Yeah. Right that's... there. You can see that they inked the center up because we had a main template that ran right down the center line. So you can feel that it's up higher right there. And yeah, it is. tapers off quite a bit huh. off to the sides. What other kind of... Because there's no template. Like, there's no template for right here. The template for right here. What other kind of little things like that did they do to these things? I know a big thing was offsetting the bumper. A lot one way so yeah this is a and twisted they started, sister they started they started coming out with a rule on you know, <laughs> the hub and you, you measure the bumper from the, the hub yeah this thing is pretty Don't twisted up oh, yeah. Yeah. look at the back windows like oh, yeah. see how flat they really want the right side to be flat yeah flat sometimes with a little curve in the door this is kind of shaped like an airplane wing yeah an airplane wing the round side is the top so exactly. the, you would go up towards the round side and yeah. you wish you would pull towards the center of the track for yeah. for those of you who don't understand why these things are and shaped low, like low that. Low pressure versus high pressure. Yeah. Yeah, let's go look at that one on the trailer. I want to see all that. That's that's my favorite body style. Of, Is it? Yeah. With the, <laughs> cur these ones. These the curvy trunk nice. lid. Now, what were these trailers? This looks like this is, IMSA and something else. This was, yeah, this was just some Texas maybe. We actually never used it. We bought it was such a good deal. We wanted the truck that that towed it. So this is like Paul Bunyan's race stop out here. Might want to go to the side. 
Yeah, that's an 18. That's the nationwide tail off of the 18 car. So a lot of times what we would do is we just we just cared about the bumper or the nose. So if we got smacked, we had all the pieces to build it ourselves again. Yeah, I was hoping you might have some extras. Yeah, roof, see the nose. Oh yeah. And it looks like an 05 type that's a, nose. Yeah, yeah, that's the bigger grill one. If you like history, you see all these noses? That's the Vigoro nose. Vigoro, was that an 18 or a, a 20 car? I want to say that's 18. If you look right there, that's a old marble quarry right there. What? <laughs> I gotta see this. If you want to get a full tour of the abandoned marble core, you can go to the Stapleton 42 Extra channel and see that on there. If I left that whole portion in here, this video would have been really long. Put a link in the description. You go subscribe to that channel for kind of the little bit more off topic behind the scenes stuff that we don't post on the main channel. Back to the cars we came back here for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, that's the favorite one. Oh, yeah. Do you know where this car came from? This one was Dennis. It was a Bush North driver, Dennis Demiris. This was the 31 Whalen car. This is actually, this was a, you know, a circle track car. And this was, we turned this into, once they start coming out with the new body styles and we got the new, that Blaze Alexander car, we turned this one into a road race car. And this is what we were road racing before we got the other road race car. Oh. So right now, I think it's I think it's set up for road racing. Interesting, because I had thought in my head that it would be nice to have a car for short track stuff and then a road race car so I could go like try to do SVRA or something yeah. like oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna remember the this. Road racing, <laughs> the, the road racing things and these are pretty. It's they're it's fun. Look at this schedule from 1996. I was like three months old when somebody taped this here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, SC, SCCA, yeah. So dad must have used this trailer once. All right, yeah, so we'll keep it right here. I mean, I don't know if we want to keep it. Oh, I just didn't know if you wanted to see if it went in there. I bet yeah. you this goes right in. Oh, yeah, right. that's it. See, I know, I know my things, even though it's been 10 years. Very low. So this is the value of finding a car that's more complete like this, so I don't have to spend three days making a radiator fit in some little tabs yeah. to be in that perfectly <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, too bad the duct work isn't there because that does take a little time, but you know, if we're having a new nose and a new, it'll be worth it. Yeah, I mean, this is this is fun. I, it'll kind of like give me a an entry level into finishing this. Oh yeah, yeah. And then when I screw it up or someone else screws it up for me, then I can. Learn how to use an English wheel yeah. with somebody who knows how to do it. Yeah. And then decide from there if I want to do it again the next time or not. <laughs> but I at least want to do it once so I can say that I know how to do it. Yeah. I mean, like the, just everything, all the pieces, like the brakes that come with it. I mean, obviously you probably want to put a little couple, I think they're like 80 bucks, 70 bucks for like a rebuild kit for like the masters and the, and the calipers, you know, just go through that stuff. You just pop the pistons out and put new rings in it. It's really basically relatively easy. It's something worth doing, you know. Yeah, we're having to do that on Lake Speed's car. Oh yeah. As it sat for 20 years and yeah. just went through the whole thing of getting them popped out, they were yeah. all stuck. Well, I actually, I took the brakes off of that car, the road race car, I took the rears and I put them on the front of the Miata that's on the lift. <laughs> that that yeah, thing look, better stop. Look at the wheel on that, it's pretty cool. <laughs> all the other Miata guys are gonna be like, where'd you get this? Yeah, you can't get this. We machined everything for this, so that's like, oh, that's hey. serious. So it's a lot of brake for a little car. That's like we enough for the in whole entire we, car. We built the the radial mount, and it goes back into the stock holes of the on the spindle. Oh wow! So that's road course rears on the front and circle track rears on the rear. And a boom tube. Yeah. You made a boom custom. tube. Boom tube Miata, that's first right there. Well, we, <laughs> we put a fuel cell in it so we couldn't run the exhaust under here anymore. Huh. So basically this is a Miata mixed with everything I know from those cars. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I wasn't expecting to see a little baby boom tube on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your fuel cell. 
because that would still be good. You're going to have to replace the bladder. I made sure I cleared room in the back of the truck for any, because I, I had no idea what you may have laying around, sitting around. I'm like, if, if it's cool and I can fit it in here. This is probably it. Out of it, too. I'm going to come right off behind you and whack me in the head. The camera's on, so it'll end up on World Star. <laughs> 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 Do you have anything to say to the world of YouTube? <laughs> no, but I do watch you. I've watched you on YouTube quite a bit. Is that a good or bad thing? No, it's cool. I like it. It's definitely fun. Well, thank you. He told me you did YouTube, but I didn't know. I didn't know. He didn't say your name, so I'm like, you put walked in, and I'm like, I think I've seen this guy before. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, we pull forward with the truck, we can push it right behind the trailer, like, feed, just like we do with the Miata. Yeah. Well, I told U-Haul I was towing a 2007 Monte Carlo. It didn't have a stock car option as a trim package. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably lighter, though, without the motor. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely yeah. is. Well, we are loaded up. and somehow managed to get the extra nose in the boom tubes to fit in the back of the truck which I don't know how that worked but it was actually like a JJ Yaley nose I believe pretty dang good day this was one heck of a surprise I was not prepared for Logan is gonna be mad that she could come to this one because we did not expect to find an abandoned rock quarry in the guy's backyard that's just phenomenal and Jeff's building his own house down there too with like stone he carved himself and all kinds of stuff. It's just unbelievable. Race cars, you never know who you're gonna meet. I was looking for a good place to pull off and check this cover because it looked like it was flapping around a lot. And I just stumbled across this. There's so much cool old stuff up here. Uh, I'm a New England fan now. I, I wanna spend some more time in this area, that's for sure. Thinking I probably need to run a ratchet strap around the whole circumference of the car because when I get on the highway, it's gonna go like boom. Here's the nose we got. It's a little freaking car, it looks like a J.J. Ailey nose. You hang this on the wall. Well, now we got the car back, it's actually time to start working on it. It's been sitting for a really, really long time. Eight, 10 years, around there. More than five, less than 10. There's some acorns and stuff up there. It's just been sitting in Jeff's garage. So definitely gotta clean out the inside. At the same time, we have to do all the body work still. So I'm gonna clean out the inside, you know, get the debris out of there, but we're not gonna like wipe everything off because it's probably gonna need a final wipe down after we start sanding everything. Now the current agenda is to pull the oil tank out because that's gonna have to be cleaned. Pull the electronics out because I don't want them getting dirtier than they are, clean those off. Now we can get to these top parts here. We'll get this Wiggins clamp off, get this cover off, and then go in from the bottom. The oil tanks is kind of held in with these cushioned bands here. There shouldn't be any oil in here, but just in case there is, we are going to use a drain pan. Just noticed something here. The lower shock mount on this truck arm is broken off. It was supposed to look like over there. And considering the forensic evidence of that side of the car being new and some tire flapping around, banging around inside the fender, I would say that uh, some type of impact happened over here before this. So we'll add that to the list to fix it, but this is ready to come out now. So this oil tank lived in a different car at one point. You see, 1876, that would mean 
Car number 18, chassis 76, just like this car is 1958. It looks like somebody already marked that. So when you take these two halves apart, they don't get disoriented. But we're gonna add our own marks anyway, after we wipe it off. Got the battery door off and I see they got the this real fancy hold down in here to hold the battery down. It's just a, uh, well, I guess it works pretty, I guess it works pretty good because I can't even get it out <laughs> without two hands, but it's just a piece of roll bar foam just kind of taped together at the right height to keep it from bouncing. That's kind of funny. Whenever Jeff said he just put their engine and transmission in it, painted it orange and ran it, he meant it. Because <laughs> I just pulled this battery out. This is new 619 2007. That means Joey Logano was racing with this battery in the car. And the relatively underwhelming yet critical job is taking the stickers off of the side that is not new because we're going to have to sand all of this. I'm taking off the lame stickers first. So you can practice preserving them? Yeah, so I can like save the cool ones. I will take the rear end cooler out so we can have that cleaned too. Carefully, Let's see if I can just leave the three. Yes. We rigged up a battery to see if it'll still light up and stuff. Yep, yeah, it does. Cool. Notice something neat taking these tabs off. Bottom one said RB, and I thought, hmm, that probably means right bottom. Top one, yep, it says RT, right top. So you don't get them mixed up because I was thinking I was going to have to label these. Don't have to. They already do that. The forensic evidence of Joey Logano's car lies under here. Where there is still orange vinyl under these tabs because Jeff never took the windshield out. They just peeled the orange off. And this was there. So that's it. Pretty cool. These ones seem to be the same so they don't need to be marked. This will make cleaning stuff a lot easier. Especially getting these out. So it says on here 2051. This board here is probably in one of those old, uh, back then that was like the red and white Rockwell automation car. 104. It's from 2004. It has 2,850 miles. Uh, these things seen some time. They've been around there for a while. It looks like this whole board just kind of comes out with all this stuff on it so we're gonna try to do that so we got all these things unplugged I marked them because there's a bunch of them and they all kind of crisscross and do different things so make sure I didn't want to mess any of them up they're all labeled and this one peg over here had a ground on it it would be cool to find a guy from Gibbs who configured all of this stuff have them explain it to us why they did the things they did. These boards are pretty neat how they're all modular like that. If this is anything like Lake Speed's engine, hopefully that that's the acorn of power. Sorry about that background noise. We got Grinder McGee over there working on her Mustang, which you'll be seeing videos about pretty soon here. Do you have something better I can grind stuff with? Yes, we can get you the angle grinder with a flap disc. Cool. So you can see there's a little bit of blue paint in there. And there's blue up in here too. This would have been from uh, Eric Almirola days when this was the Husqvarna car. And you can see blue in there. Maybe under here just a just a hair of banquet red in some places. But got everything vacuumed up. Looks much better. Still needs a good washing, but it's good enough now to start doing body work. I think. Among other things, got to pull the master cylinders off and replace those because just they're old. Good to do that. We are running over to see Randy LaJoy at Joy of Seating to get me measured for a seat to get in this car because I'm a abnormally large size. There's not very many used seats running around that I will fit in. So. And why wouldn't you want the best seat? Yeah, I want the best seat so we could move it into other things as time goes on. No used old baloney here. You can't put a price on safety. How many, uh, you must got a lot of followers because it's amazing how many people, I mean, I've seen you on that. Does that happen a lot? 
<laughs> a lot more than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Pretty close. <laughs> wow. So what are you looking for here? Shoulder heights here. The hips. Good there. Shoulders, you know, if they're too tight, they roll you in. Yeah, a little bit. But they're bit. not, huh? A little bit. Just a little I could open them up about a half. You're so big. Yeah. If I flex it. This is what tight. happens when you eat your vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's perfect, but obviously I'm gonna make I gotta raise it up. Because that's that's right. That's right where I need it to be, but that is what kind of posture should you have when you're in the seat? Like, should you be like hunched over a little bit or totally straight or? Well, a lot of guys, once you're sitting there, it's all neutral. You know, a lot of guys, some guys roll the seats up, some guys roll them back. Hmm. I mean, right about that position, it looks like the ergonomically the right way. And each year can come in. It really does look like a perfect fit. It's yeah. pretty darn close. I mean, honestly, I gotta have to, Raise his head up, because that's about where it needs to go. Eight inch. You got a lot longer legs and yeah. torso. Yeah. <laughs> Get here next week, we'll have this thing ready to go to get mounted for you. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's fast. We got this one, so it's that'll work. I can just redo the headrest to get you. I'll bring these in an inch. That'd be cool. What's that seat from? Brand new. Oh. Uh, brand new, the guy we built it for. Came to the show, said, oh, my God, I'll walk just like this. Okay. So then built it for him, sent it to him. Big rush to get it done, okay. Get it to him. I like it. <laughs> okay. He said, well, my buddy's seat that he's driving for has them too. Well, he has a different style. He has a straighter up one, not a curved one. Uh. So I like the straighter up. I was like, you sat in the damn thing. Huh. I copied the one that you sat in. <laughs> was that a PRI? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> What's so, the difference between the straighter up and the curved one? It's like a sprint car. Uh, sprint car guys, I mean, some guys like sitting straight up. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Some guys don't like the little curve in the back. So whatever. We give them options. Hmm. Uh, Tammy, make him up a paperwork. We'll sell him this one. Okay. Had to drive through your homeland to get the car home. Connecticut? Yeah, it was in Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah, I drove through Danbury on the way back. Oh yeah, they're right there at the mall. Hell, that's where the racetrack was. <laughs> I was down, I was no walk. I'm right on 95, you went 84. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't remember what the roads were called. I just did no, what yeah, the thing yeah. told me that's to do. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Logan yeah. usually helps me with this part, but I gotta get this video uploaded so we can go live for you guys on Saturday like we usually post. And she's in the zone working on her car right now, so I don't wanna bother her. <laughs> I'm not gonna pull her off task let her keep working so some questions you may have yes it will have an x pipe yes i am going to race it it's like a local short track series where they use old cup cars bush cars um pro cup cars those kind of things like the old steel body gen 4 type cars that you are basically not legal anywhere else now and yes there will be videos about the racing yes you can come to them once we know more about which ones we're at, the season actually started already, so the clock is really ticking to get it going, so to miss the least amount of it as possible. Yes, we have an engine on the way. It's probably not something you would expect us to put in there, but it's what we found, so it's what we're gonna use. You will see that in the video too. And if you would like to support the racing, help us pay for diesel, hauling that thing around, going all these different tracks and whatnot, you can go to stapletonautoworks.com and find the hats and shirts that you see us wearing. Right now I'm wearing the Goodwrench style hat and the Monte Carlo shirt. The Goodwrench looking shirt that I was wearing in the video. Don't have one of those hanging up, but you saw me wearing it, so you know what the deal is there. What we have here is what we got. Everything gets packed by Logan whenever she's not thumping on her car. <laughs>
You can find all that stuff on staplesandautoworks.com. Check it out. Maybe you find something you like. Also, another reminder, if you want to see the freaking awesome abandoned marble quarry in their backyard, you can find that on the Stapleton 42 Extra channel, which will have a link in the description.